You're lying. Bonjour, dear friends. Hello, hello. Welcome to JCB Live. This is such an exciting time to be together and live of live. We're in the beautiful town of Yonville tonight. And this is so exciting that we're going to be introducing you some fabulous friends all the way from another part of the country. One of the most exciting part of the country, and this is the Southeast. They have been extremely successful in the wonderful world of hotel, restaurant, art galleries. They've done it all. And they really have created one of the most exciting collection. I will start with him because I always finish with the most beautiful part, the dessert. His name is Mark Kessler. His father and himself have created one of the most amazing collection of hotels, very unique buildings, phenomenal historical destination with great food, wine bars. And they've been so innovative that they actually started a tasting room, blending room in their own hotels. So this is very exciting. But tonight, we're going to be not only conversing with Mark, but with his beautiful wife, Diana. Not only she is gorgeous, she comes from the best two parts of the world, half Lebanese, half Persians. And not just from Tehran, but from the old town of Shiraz, where really wine, I'd like to remind all of you, started. Beyond everything else, I would like to tell you that she's an amazing fashion designer and got so busy with her husband that Jay joined hands and she's doing all the designs of every room and all the experiences at the hotel. So, dear friend, this is a, I had to convince them and force them to be on live because they could be shy sometimes. And we have a lot of questions for them from working together to being a great couple, to designing in bed, their ultimate room, to all their great lives. So dear friends, welcome to the fabulous Kessler family, Diana and Mark. Bonsoir. Can you hear us? Wow. Mark, we're going to have a toast. Now is the moment. Are you popping your cork or you've already done that? We're already done. For you. We're ready for you. Well, fantastic. Diana and Mark, so good to be together. Great to be together. It's been too long. I think well, we saw you, saw you about a year ago in Charleston, John Charles. And we had an amazing time as always. And I remember a few months before you were here for my 21st birthday. So thank you. Yes, of course. Of course. Ah! So toast to your success and your incredible love partnership and the beautiful design you've created. Diana, is it the room, cheers, that you've designed where you're in? Yes. Yes. Santé. 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 So tell us about this amazing room. This looks so incredible. Wow. What a style. Thank you. We are currently in Savannah, Georgia at our project Plant Riverside District. Um, this is the JW Marriott Hotel, the JW Savannah. And we are currently in our restaurant Stone and Webster in the back special room. Um, there's a lot of beautiful art you'll see here, some custom drapery that was inspired by the art you see in the room. Instead of doing something off the shelf, I decided to design something that related to the paintings in the room. Um, beautiful banquettes and lush velvet drapery. I know you love your velvet, Jean Charles. Red velvet's your favorite, Jean Charles. <laughs> I love it. This looks very sexy, extremely inviting. And that's your latest creation, isn't it? That's your latest child. One of the many, yeah. yeah. We have a lot of great food and beverage outlets in, on this property to see. All very different and lots of unique offerings. Um, but this is one of the newest, for sure. So what to both of you, before we get into your personal life of love and passion, what to both of you create an amazing hotel experience? And I know it's a big question, but you are kind of the experts, not kind of, you are the experts of that field. So tell us uh, what's your view of it is. 
Well, um, you know, it's a just like you, John Charles, it's a, a lot of passion, a lot of determination and really, you know, understanding what your what your guests, what your clients want. So kind of taking all those talents and putting those together. Um, if you look at one, any one of our 12 hotels, you'll see we're in some very great locations from Savannah, Georgia to Beaver Creek, Colorado is about as far west as we go. But they're all a very special location. And uh, each one has a unique design, a unique personality, uh, much like you, all of your wines have a, a different personality um, and different wine for different occasions, different hotels for different occasions. And we really try to design to the communities that we're in um, and also bring inspiration to all the spaces that we design. Um, perhaps you may, you may not care for this, but then when you see it and how we apply it and how we design it, you're inspired and you want to try something new in your home or or it entices you to want to travel and, and experience new, new things and not just the design, but the total experience that you would have when you would come visit our properties. They're all so different, yet there's like a, you know, underlying continuity between all of them where you can really feel our brand and how we, how we like to not just design, but service the guests and um, give a really nice, inspiring place for our guests to enjoy. And we like to get involved in the community and really understand what the community needs whenever we build a hotel. Um, the architecture is very purposeful. The interior design is very purposeful. You know, we're just not building a box with, um, you know, a roof on it and paint it white or paint it brown. As you can see, there's a lot of color in the walls. There's a lot of color in these walls and in the room here and everything's curated. Uh, obviously, uh, my dad, Richard, gets very, very involved. And so we're kind of a, a tr the trio of us. Uh, you know, we're a family business. So, you know, we have a lot of disagreements and we work them out and, and, and work through them all. And at the end of the day, everybody has their input and we end up with a beautiful product. So. Yeah. And we, we go ahead. No, no, please, please, Diana. Actually, in right now, we're in an old 1912 power plant that we've converted into this amazing project. So, um, we can't wait for you to come see it as well, John Charles. Well, and you need to tell us about this because, as you know, dear friends, we live so I can see Robert has been to your property, Richard. Kennedy is watching. Sarah Brewer and I have been there together. Cynthia is with us. Many, many friends, Vince and Ken and many others, and they all love your property. So explain why and how you take a historical site with a lot of heritage and a lot of history, bring it to life, modernize it. Why do you really start always with history and that angle that you love? Well, you make sure you, you don't have any sanity when you start this because you're not going to have any when it's over, Jean-Charles. It's, <laughs> it's been a very long project. We started this project, um, I think my dad put it under contract in like October of 2000. And what year was that? 2000? No. Uh, 2012. October 2012. And we bought a power plant in a matter of 45 days. Did all of our due diligence. But I mean, it was an A plus location on the river in Savannah. If you've ever been to Savannah, it's between the Savannah River and River Street. You just don't find any property. So it's the best located property in Savannah. So, I mean, obviously, just like any real estate, you've got to pick the location as the most important thing. And to That's do something key. like this and, and take it on, it took a lot of vision, a lot of determination, a lot of hard work. And we started this eight years ago, eight years ago, last December. So yeah. we've been going on eight years and, and we still have phase two that will open this summer. So we're very excited for that to open. But, you know, it took a lot of determination, a lot of vision. Obviously, Richard grew up here uh, in Savannah. <clears throat> An interesting fact you may not know, John Charles, is my ancestors came from Salzburg, Austria to Savannah, Georgia in 1734. And so my family has been here since 1734. And uh, another unique thing about this site is the first port of Savannah was located right here about... 200 yards from where we're sitting now. So I there's all how much map. wine came that, at yeah. that time. I'll, 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 did you, were you sending wine over here then, John Charles? About Absolutely. Not then. <laughs> so we've probably been carrying your wine here in the city for two or 300 years now. Uh, um, we're very honored. We thank you so much for that. So yeah. how is it, I got to tell you, how is it to convert? Um, and I've seen, and, and for all our friends, this is the Kessler Collection of hotels so kesslercollection.com you can see all the properties are amazing how is it to convert a power plant there must be a lot of energy going on in each of the room it's a high voltage high fertile environment 
Very, very. Yeah. I mean, just to, just to give you an example, like a typical hotel might have about 10 to 20 room types maximum. In this building alone, we have five buildings. In the power plant building alone, we have over 100 room types. That's a lot of room types to keep up with. I always tell my team, once you get through this project, you can do any project. This is the hardest one we've all ever worked on. It's the most rewarding and it's so fun. I mean, when the first night we stayed here, after all the years of construction, it was so surreal to walk in and to sleep in the power plant, in the rooms that we've designed. And we've done everything we can to keep the history of this place. We love to design to be authentic. And this is a truly industrial chic power plant that's now a place where people used to, Mark said they used to house machinery and now it houses people. So. Wow, this is so cool. Now, we have a few questions coming in from Florida, from San Francisco. We have our good friend Sasha, who is on the show, who is an amazing opera singer. So maybe we come with her and we perform. I play the piano and she sings. <laughs> we're actually, John Charles, next summer, we're opening our, um, it's called District Live, will be our live music venue. And we'll be able to host concerts in there. Obviously, when things get back to normal here, we'll open that next summer. And we would love to have you, any of your friends, come do some live performances. Uh, we're all about entertainment here. This so. summer. Wow. This I summer. love this it. Summer. <laughs> Sorry, this summer. So we're all about entertainment and live music. So uh, what's like Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, we have live music uh, on the river walk behind us. So that fits right in with what we're all about. We're all about entertainment. And actually, sure. for her, maybe the Beethoven Terrace um, on our mezzanine level would be perfect for her to sing because it's got the organs and all this beautiful sound and acoustics. So that's another spot in the meantime that she can come sing. Absolutely. And, and she's doing a thumbs up on the chat. I know she's going to be up for it. And we know Mark Drake could be her partner in crime dancing and doing maybe a very soft strip tease on stage. We hope he could do that. And we have a, a charming lady, a great collector, friend of ours, who is asking, Yelena Laudati in San Francisco, bonjour, what style is your home, Mark and Diana? Do you live in a 17th, 18th century home? No. no. We live in Orlando. There's nothing like that in Orlando, John yes, Charles. Yes, there is. But we don't live in a, we live in a newer home. Yeah. Um, it has a contemporary feel, but it's, the eclectic. Under, it's very yeah. eclectic. It has like these under touches of bohemian flair into it. Right. Um, you have to come visit, but... We'll do the next one at our house, perhaps. I don't know. Oh, absolutely. So I have a question for Diana specifically, who loves bubbles and who creates the best design. And Diana, we all know now your mother is from Iran and your father is from Lebanon, the best two places in the Middle East for me. And she's from the town of Shiraz where wine started. So yes. you should be the one describing the JCB 21. Why don't you give us a few words for that? Okay. Wait. I know you take a bubble bath with it occasionally, right? Which, which one? The 21? Absolutely. Yeah. Or the 69, either way. Or you number could, nine. Or number nine we have here tonight. Well, number nine, even better. Wow. We've had all the numbers. Yeah, we've had all, all the numbers. They're, they're, all they're all in our cellar and they're on the wall with your with your uh, signature on we them. Well, them. I know you've studied the Kama Sutra very carefully, so you know them all. Yeah, we're saying we don't this. talk about that on the show. <laughs> it's the family show tonight. <laughs> I know my daughters are watching, so here we go. Yeah, well, they live with you. They know what it's like to live yeah, with they're, you. Yeah, they're used to you. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you describe it, Diana? I would find it to be very, like, seductive and fresh. It has some sweetness to it um, and a little tiny bit of dryness. I think she's talking about me, John Charles. <laughs> hey, I know she shaved you this morning. Dear friends, everyone who is with us tonight and who's going to watch that again, I got a video last night from Diana and Mark, and Mark had a beautiful beard. And he, <laughs> he was asking me, shall I shave it? And I said, no, shave your torso so you could show your beautiful peck, but keep the beard, and he did the reverse. I'm sorry, John Charles. We got a mix up. Mix up here. <laughs> but I like it. It looks very soft, by the way. It is. It it's is. nice. It's nice. It, is. it looks it. great. 
I forgot how great you look without it. <laughs> My mother-in-law is not a fan of it, Jean Charles. So she'll be happy to see me when I get home. I think you look great. So the both of you, a lot of people wonder always, you know, Diana, you had a very successful design, fashion design company. And maybe you want to stand up to show us your beautiful dress. You design it yourself. I did. Look at this. What a gorgeous girl. Woo! So Diana, tell us about your path and how you got to, to continue to do design dress on special order, but join full time your husband to create this business. How did it work as a family? So how it works as a family is my fashion passion is currently on hold. As we develop all these amazing properties, we're getting to the point where, you know, this, this one especially took a lot of our time um, and I didn't get to do too much of the fashion. So instead I got to actually put it into the uniforms on, the, on these properties that we're designing and building um, and having a little bit of my creative outlet there. But um, when you talk about, you know, your dreams and your passions, I mean, I love interior design and interior architecture. That's what I majored in but I always wanted to pursue fashion at some point in my life. So I made a deal with myself that at the age of 30, I'll design my first collection and see how it goes. Um, and it was received really well and I really got into it. And I think everything I learned from building buildings and design and working with contractors is the relationship you have with the team that's fabricating your clothing. So it was a really good understanding for me on how to create based on what I've learned from designing buildings and, and interiors. Um, so that is still something that, you know, I was doing the custom made to order and I would love to have a collection someday where it's ready to wear. And I was about to pursue that. And then Mark asked me if I could help out for a few months. And here we are five or six, six years later, yeah, six years later, um, working together, which we love to do. We love working together. It's so much fun. Um, it gets intense at times, but we're a really good team with, with everybody that, that supports us. And um, like Mark said, that Richard and Mark and I really get into this. We're very passionate about what we do. So, um, you know, I, I think that it's great to, to, to use both outlets. And I really enjoy interior design, but I also enjoy the fashion side. And then I've also gotten into graphics and helping with our menu designs and really making sure that when we design a space, that it all ties in together, not just the not just the interior design, but everything you see, the glassware, the the logos, the uniforms. So it's a holistic and complete design that we're all happy with, including the music. Well, which is quite amazing because you both have really created what we call the bohemian lifestyle. Yeah. And you're gonna to have to tell us about this, but before we go to this lifestyle, what happened? When a young couple like you sharing the same bed, because you still stay in the same bedroom, you don't have separate beds. I know you sleep typically very tightly together because I've, I know a lot about this and you hold each other tight. When you have a disagreement on design and logos and colors, how do you make it up? Do we really have a disagreement? I, you know, we really talk at our offices are next door to each other. Yeah, John we Charles. share a wall in the office. We share a wall. We talk it through. We, she's a very talented designer. And look, she does 90% of it. And I come in and I say, this looks great. Change that. Change this. And it's really just a, a And a honestly, great... a lot of the times, I mean, the, the suggestions that Mark makes really enhances what I'm working on. It's just such wow. a nice, like the cherry on top. He'll come in. And it's so funny. My I'm the cherry I, on top, John He's Charles. a cherry on top. <laughs> and she tells me working on something. And, you know, sometimes when you're so into something you're working on, no matter what it is, you might not, you might just get a little stuck. And then here comes Mark and he's like, why don't you guys just do that? And we're like, oh, yeah, why didn't we think of that ourselves? So we all just work so well together. So, I mean, you know, not to just paint this like pretty picture, but it's so true. It just really works and people always tell us like how do you two work together how do you guys not want to kill each other at the end of the day um we just have such a big respect for each other and we're so alike in so many ways um yet we, we're different also in so many ways that i think when it comes to the design and working on things um we have very similar aesthetics and you know we, we, and we also both push each other too so and then we have a consistency of team that we work with that knows our style and what we yeah. like and They've obviously bring a lot of 
value to the table, a lot of talents. And so we're able to kind of as we work through this product over the last eight years. And we've concepted, I think, 15 different food and beverage concepts here. And we operate in all of these and we've done all the creative design. So I think we've worked with a lot of the same team through all that. Mm -hmm. And it's made it easier. Yeah. too. We have a great team, it's a very solid team. We all know each other so well. They know me. I know them, Mark, whatever, and Richard as well. So um, it's great to have so much passion around us and dedication that really makes our job so much easier. Well, you make it sound the perfect trium vera. So I love it. It's pretty impressive because, you know, I, I imagine a lot of couples tend to disagree on design, specifically for their home design, but it seems that you both have your role as well so well defined, which is so great. So one plus one equals five. I love that. That's right. Right. So now tell us about, you know, what we is a huge reference in the hotel and restaurant world now that you've created. What is the Bohemian lifestyle? And define that for all of us listening and all of us who's going to want to come to all the hotels. Absolutely. So Richard has this little recipe uh, that he shares with everybody. And so it's a little bit of a mixture of everything. It's uh, a little bit of, of, he calls it California funk. It's a yes. little bit of European classical. And what's the third ingredient? Gypsy, right? And the gypsy lifestyle. So it's a little bit of and all. And percentages, but just like wine, yeah. the percentages changes on the mood. That's right. And, and and what the varietal is, right? So depending on where we're designing and, and what kind of grapes we're working with, meaning the community, the city, is yeah. how, how much of what we put in these different designs, I mm -hmm. think. That's right. And you, you curate yourself the music. Obviously, not only the, the fabrics, the lighting, the emotions, you said the, the menu, the playlist. Yeah, the, the playlist. So the we'll playlist. pick out, let's say, 10, 20, 30 songs that we like. We'll give That's, it, okay, maybe 100, 100 songs. songs that we like, <laughs> and we'll give it to the group we work with to produce our music, and yeah. they'll put together a list, and we'll go back and forth and fine-tune it and fine-tune it. But we take, you know, obviously designing the space, as you know, all the senses are engaged um, I know when we come to your tasting room there at, at Raymond Vineyards in St. Helena, you, you've got the senses and everything's engaged there. So it's the same thing when we, we design our hotels from what it smells like to what it feels like to what it tastes like. I mean, all and what and what you're hearing. So all those senses are engaged when you're in our hotels. Well, I'm, I'm very excited that you're really inspiring a lot of friends of ours. Kelly Pug is saying, what a nice couple they are. You can tell they work well together. Robert Landry, what a great wine blend. And Richard Kennedy, just for you to know, said, ooh, Mark is the cherry on top. Ooh, that's right. I was waiting for him to make that comment, John Charles. That was for him, too. Since that's said he was so listening. sweet. So um, I would like for you to tell us a little bit about the artwork as well, because you've done something that we've seen a little bit in Europe, but not much in the U.S. It's this incredible association of art. There's an echo here. All over the, the hotels and as well art in the rooms. And you have as well your own gallery in every hotel that you manage. So if people want to buy art, they can actually do that, which is very unusual. Yeah, we have a really expansive art program. So... Um just to start, you know, you mentioned the galleries. We have the Grand Bohemian galleries at most of our properties. And the properties that we don't have the space for the retail, we turn some of the, like, meeting space and different areas into the galleries where we can showcase these wonderful artists that we work with. Um, we have lots of wonderful gallery directors and um, have, they bring in some new artists. Or we, we Mark and I will, will find an artist. Or obviously Richard has lots of artists that he's meeting with and bringing to the table. Um, we're always looking for new talent. Um, we recently have found some really amazing talent in the last couple of years um, that we're highlighting in some of our newer properties and um, obviously still keeping the wonderful relationships with the artists that we've been working with. Um, we are doing a lot of amazing murals and collaborations and working with them on even some custom fabrics and really trying to take our whole art program to another level. Um, and including working with not just like painting artists that paint, but photographers and um, all kinds of 
Hmm? Bronze artist. Yeah, too. bronze artist. Yeah. Um, we have our Grand Bohemian horse that you'll see at some of our properties. It's a beautiful bronze there and, and many others. Um, yeah, and John Charles, as you know, uh, my father's big passion for all of his life has been art. And everybody's got an opinion about art of what's good art and what's bad art. And some of his art I love, I think it's gorgeous. And some of it I think it's terrible and I would never spend a nickel on it, right? <laughs> but that's all, everybody's got their own opinions about art. So, but well, he's got a, a very expansive collection. He's collected from all over the world. He and I have traveled and collect art as we go and artifacts and we use them in hotels, whether it's a year later or 10 years later, 20 years later. So he just kind of amasses an art collection and we go through the art warehouse. We say, this is great for this product or we've got X amount of this art and let's put it into the next product and, and we'll create around yeah. that sometime. In the last couple of years, we've been finding a lot of new artists that we're working with. Um, there's one artist that Mark and I found in a city where we said, we let's commission you to do all the guest room art for our Atlantic hotel that's opening. Um, his name is Shane Penley. He's a very talented artist. Um, Nikki Zarabi, she's a she's actually a first generation um, Iranian American out of Atlanta. She did some gorgeous murals for us. If you if you look up Plant Riverside or Grand Bohemian Charlotte, a lot of the tagged places on Instagram are, are her murals. Um, really gets a lot of uh, love and attention. Um, we have Jean Claude Roy and Greg Mike and lots of great artists that we feature. Yeah, I was very. Oh, and Andrea Carreras, of course. I'm sorry, yeah. I have to mention. Yeah. I am obsessed with her art. I love everything she paints. And Jean Charles, you would love Andrea Carreras. She's from Argentina, and she paints the most romantic paintings in a modern day way, and with with so much passion and love. And you, you represent as well a good friend of mine, very famous, Mr. Brito, as well. That yes. I yes, yes, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I actually have a Rito mask I was wearing before we came online here. <laughs> hey, tell me, so Laurel Robinson, a charming lady, is saying we could see your synergy between the two of you. And there's a painting behind you. Could you show us that painting behind you? It seems that it represents the both of you very much. Yeah. Do you want to describe that one? The one behind it? Yes. Um, this yeah, artist. She was very really observant, Laurel. Yeah. Can you see it better now, Jean Charles? Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. He's an amazing artist, and we actually have several pieces in actually all the pieces we own of his work is in this restaurant. And uh, Richard wanted to kill me when I wanted to put these pieces in here because they're they're quite expensive. Um, but they're so beautiful. And now that they're in here, I think he's happy that they're in here. Um but it actually inspired me to design this drapery that's right here. I actually took elements from his paintings and created my own pattern and then had this had this printed. Um, so it not just would inspire others, but it inspired me as a designer. And I pulled from the art to design my own fabric for this space to really tie in and have this whole room have that feel to it, so. Wow, this is so exciting. I cannot wait. These are beautiful oils behind us. They're oil paintings. Very impressive. So why don't we pour the next wine, the Chardonnay. And I'd love for Mark this time to tell us a little bit about what he feels about it. Because I'd like the sense of emotion and masculinity to divulge his appetite oh, for you and the wine at the same time. While he's pouring the wine, these are all the details that we do here. These are little coasters with the logo embossed of this restaurant. I don't know if you can see it, but you probably can't this far away. We can, it's gorgeous. So how many properties you have total? We have 12 uh, now, Jean Charles, and uh, number 13 will open the end of this year, um, the Grand Bohemian Lodge in uh, downtown Greenville, South Carolina. We actually, we're there uh, the last two nights and just got in today around six o'clock from Greenville. So uh, that's going to be a stunning, stunning property as well. So that'll make lucky 13. Wow. Right, on the right, right on the river in downtown, um, downtown Greenville in the, in actually in the park, the, the city's park, we actually bought a piece of private land and we developed it like a, a national uh, park lodge. You would find in, you know, Grand Tetons national park or Estes park out in Colorado. So it's, it's truly phenomenal in downtown Greenville. You'd never expect to find anything like that there. 
Very cool. And what's what's the the next plan? What's the next project? Anything well, secret you want to share? We 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 have a uh, we have a one of our favorite hotels is in Asheville, North Carolina, called the Grand Bohemian Hotel uh, in Asheville, North Carolina, and, and it's right in the Biltmore Village at the uh, at the entrance of the gates of uh, the Biltmore Estate. We purchased a piece of property across the street from there. So we plan to do another about 85 room hotel there. Um, wow. So that's currently in the in the planning phase now. Uh, and we're also uh, about to close on another piece of property in St. Augustine, Florida. We've got the uh, historic Casa Monica Hotel that was built in 1883 by Henry Flagler. Excuse me, 1888 yes. by Henry Flagler. You know, he had the Florida East Coast Railway and and uh, he would take people from the Northeast all the way down to his Breakers uh, Resort in Palm Beach. And he, he owned that hotel for many years. And, and it was the uh, St. John's County Courthouse that we renovated and reopened in, in uh, 2000. So we've had a ho the hotel there. It's been a great market for us. So we plan to do another hotel there in, in St. Augustine. And then we're looking at some other uh, sites around here. John Charles in the, in, the, in the Low Country area, which is, you know, this Charleston, Hilton Head, Savannah area. So... Those are two that we've got kind of in the works and a third third one perhaps too. And always looking for opportunities to develop and yep. manage as well. So if anyone has anything, let us know. That's right. <laughs> yeah, well, we, don't, we, don't, we don't own, we don't have to own all of our hotels to manage them. So we also third party manage for uh, other people as well. So that's this so is exciting. delicious wine, John Charles. I like this. Great color. Well, this is, you know, like Russian this. River Green Valley. You know, the Russian came here in the early 1800s and they planted one of this amazing vineyard in the Green Valley area. So what does it make you think and feel? Tell us. Uh, it makes me feel like summertime, John Charles. It oh. makes me feel like sunshine. I like the apricots on there, a little bit of peach note on there. It's got some great uh, texture to it. Very drinkable. Very drinkable. Um, and a little citrus note on the end there. So it's very nice. I quite like well, that. And, and we were at the Deloach. I don't know if you remember. We were at Deloach, your Deloach winery, probably six, seven years ago. Beautiful Absolutely. Winery. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we need to redesign maybe some of the rooms with Diana. I think it would be great. So we can. We'd love to help. We'll give you the friends and family discount. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, I'd love to hear from you this, besides the fact that Mark is obviously from the South, uh, what is your passion to develop the South and where do you see the South of the U.S. going in the next 10, 20 years? Yeah, John Charles, I was, I was uh, born in Orlando, Florida, a little uh, area called Winter Park. And uh, nine months later, my parents moved to uh, Atlanta, Georgia. So I grew up in Atlanta, went to high school there, went off to college at SMU with our friend Richard Kennedy that's watching the show tonight. And um, lived, uh, then went up to grad school at Cornell uh, in uh, Ithaca, New York, obviously. And I uh, found my way down to Miami and then back to Orlando. And, you know, I... Besides from, aside from living, in, you know, up in New York and out in Texas, I've really lived... Uh, and really enjoyed my time in, in the Southeast. And if you really look at what's what's happening here, I mean, you, we're obviously now with with uh, kind of the new world we're living in. Uh, Dinah's brother, uh, Simon Simon, is a big realtor uh, in um, with her mom in Orlando. And they've seen just uh, an influx of people moving from obviously California, the Northeast and other parts of the United States. And I think just the weather here, the cost of living in the Southeast, uh, the proximity, you can jump in your car and drive to many cities. I think within a four hour drive from here, I think there's 13 or 15 million people. So you have Charlotte, uh, Atlanta, Orlando, Jacksonville is two hours away. So I think it's a very, uh, obviously the, the weather is, a, is an attractor. And I know lots of, unfortunately, lots of parts of the United States and people are, you know, you know, suffering through this winter storm now. And, you know, we've had our, you know, rain and cold and obviously we have sure. hurricanes tornadoes and all that but i think overall it's just a great place to live great quality of life um and and there's 
you know, just across the river, you have Hilton Head and Charleston, which have a lot of personality. You've got Savannah's got a lot of personality. Then you got big cities like Atlanta. So I just think the Southeast has a lot to offer. And then over the next 10 or 20 years, I mean, it's been a, I think it'll continue to really grow. I mean, when I grew up in Atlanta, it was a couple million people. I think it's five and a half or six million people now, you know, 30 years later. And I think if you look in our industry, in the hospitality industry, a lot of, a lot of you know, big investors and private investors are looking to the Southeast to invest. So, you know, what used to be, you know, we used to be able to go to Asheville, North Carolina and find a couple hotels there. But now over the last really 10 years, and I think that'll continue, you'll have a lot more of these, these investors and these big funds looking at these tertiary and secondary markets throughout the Southeast to really develop their portfolio and develop their footprint. So I think overall, and Diana and I have talked about, hey, if we were where to move, where would we move to? And we keep coming back to Florida or somewhere here very close to where we are today. So it's just a great place and, to live. Well, and exactly. And on that note, Diana, born in London, parents from the two most amazing countries in the Middle East, meeting a charming boy at Cornell University, getting his master's degree, the rest is history, Diana, but what makes to you the South so appealing? Because I need to tell you, before you answer, for me, is the people. I always find the people in the South so friendly, so nice, so generous, so yeah. generous with their time and so giving of their time. And I'm, I love that in the South. What about you? Yeah, and as you know, you, you've experienced where my parents are from, their, their cultures, you know, the Lebanese and the Persian cultures are very giving people. They're very hospitable, um, full of love and love to have a great time and celebrate each other and family and food and friends. So the Southeast is very similar in that sense, right? It's all about family and friends and getting together and, oh, come welcome, be, sit here with us. And um, I really, have been drawn to that since I was a kid. And uh, we moved, when I moved to, we actually moved to Florida first. And I had a British accent when we moved to Orlando. I was about eight and a half or nine. And I quickly wanted to have this American accent because I wanted to sound like all the other kids. Um, but I, I already felt at home. And um, I remember in my early 20s, I left Orlando. I went to like, well, in my college, I went to Miami and then back to Orlando. And when I left in my early 20s, I said, oh, I'm done with Florida. I'm never going to move back here. Um, but I missed it. And uh, I ended up obviously moving back. And um, Mark and I got married. And I was in Atlanta at the time. We dated long distance for a couple of years. Um, but I just love it here. The South is so warm and welcoming. And the people here are great. The weather is awesome. Um, there's, there's nothing to, to not love about being in the Southeast. Only thing I the haven't gotten her to truly love is real southern cooking, fried green tomatoes, <laughs> barbecue, all that kind of thing. Other than that, she loves the South, John Charles. But I can get her to eat some barbecue. We've got a barbecue pavilion out here that she loves a barbecue there. It's the but, only barbecue I like. That yeah. and my my brother's uh, yeah. uh brisket. Brisket, he made. brisket. That was yeah. really good too. Well, maybe that's because you need some red wine with it. That's right. Absolutely. We do. Yeah, we'll need to pour that next. Yeah, tell us uh, about what you think of the Pinot. We wanted to choose this wine because well, sir, it's all about romance. I have to admire this beautiful bottle, Jean Charles. It's absolutely gorgeous. I haven't seen this one yet. We have, what's the, what's the one that we have in ours? His uh, JCB. No, the one. The Surrealist. The which one? The one that has a beautiful label. The, uh, oh, the, uh, yeah, what's your one in your clear crystal uh, bottle, your wine, Jean Charles? The Surrealist. The, 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 yeah. the Surrealist. The Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Those are so gorgeous in our cellar. I don't even want to open them because they're so pretty. That's everybody's first comment is how beautiful they are. So we don't even drink them. We just look at them, John Charles. <laughs> Thank you. Well, well I hope there's good you, wine in there. Uh, well, you'll tell us. So give us, uh, you know, as, as phenomenal leaders of the hotel world, you know, building from amazing historical properties, the heritage of great cities, making amazing design, great food, great bars. Where do you see the trend in the hospitality industry after what we've lived? Where do you see it going? Is there any big changes you want to share that you think are happening? You mean as far as the physical design or? or what, All of the what, above in terms of hospitality at large. 
Yeah, again, I think if you if you look across our portfolio of 12 hotels on John Charles during this time of COVID and and, you know, people, you know, just have to get away, with, which is one reason I mentioned the southeast is so attractive because you can jump in your car and, and drive four hours from just about any major city and be in a lot of different places. Our hotels that performed the best were in destination locations, beach locations, mountain locations. Um, so I think you'll continue to see that trend um, of people looking to invest in the Southeast and in the hotel business in those kind of destination markets. I know Gatlinburg was very popular, Pigeon, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge. So those kind of areas where people could go with their family, jump in the car, and maybe they're instead of taking a three or four hour flight to California, they'll jump in the car and drive four or five hours to a beach or the mountain somewhere. So I think from a, just a, just an investment uh, mindset that I think, again, those destination locations, unfortunately our hotels and our, our, our CBD, our downtown business locations, like downtown Orlando, Minneapolis, Charlotte, obviously those hotels, you know, are, are hurting because, you know, there's nobody in the office buildings, banks are working from home, a lot of people working from home, no major sporting venues. So I think obviously that will come back. It's just going to take longer on the curve. But really those destination markets are the ones that I think are popular. Then as far as designing spaces, Diane, you might want to talk about restaurants and what people are looking for these days. Yeah, I was just going to add too. I mean, even our hotels and our downtown markets, while the occupancy might be hurting, we've been hosting some beautiful weddings. I mean, when we design these hotels, we, you know, we, we design them in a way where you would want to have your wedding, your special events, or even just a little getaway. And, you know, I, I look and I see these pictures that come through of these gorgeous proposals or weddings or whatever it may be. And it's just so inspiring to see how guests can really enjoy the different backdrops that we provide um, and, you know, really providing a, a place where they can have such wonderful memories. I mean, we hear from friends that, you know, friends that we make new or friends from before where they're like, oh, I have such a great memory at this hotel or that hotel that we that we you know, that we've designed and, and provided. Um, it's about it's about creating a sense of place where, you know, you really want to come back to it or you want to it intrigues you to experience the next property we have. Um, we really try to have like this, you know, this bohemian club, per se, of, of guests that just want to go check out the next property that we have and experience something totally different. Because me as a guest, um, I've experienced some amazing places and when I go to another one of that same group's place and it looks exactly the same, it doesn't inspire me in a way where I want to, if I'm going to go somewhere, I want to try something different, try something new, but know that I'm going to get the great service and the great food that I would expect from the other place. Yeah, I think just like a That's lot of things and, and, and a lot of products and a lot of other experiences out there or a lot of other, um, you know, consumer Based products out there, everybody's selling the experience these days. Everybody wants something different. They want a story. So I think you'll continue to see that evolution in our industry. And so our story about the art and uh, these hotels are truly a reflection of our personality. Our biggest challenge is to market that and get that out to people. So they say, hey, when you come here, you're going to experience something truly unique, something truly different. So that's always our with challenge intuitive service. with intuitive service. So our, that's always our challenge is how do we market this how do you reach the right right guest so i think that's how we really connect with people is is it's great when our hotels a lot of them are like museums i mean people come and just walk around explore our lobby here has a 135 foot dinosaur what 140 foot dinosaur <laughs> and she's chrome she's painted chrome her name is chromina jewel chromina jewel is wow her name. you have to come check her out so that's the she's kind of very thing very sexy by the way yeah Oof. And she stands about, uh, how tall is she? Like four stories. She's about three or four stories tall. It takes up the whole entire uh, lobby. So it's, you'll never find a dinosaur in another hotel lobby, John Charles, except for Well, her. you're getting all of us excited. Look at Mark Drake is shivering. Ilona is excited. And, you know, we want to see her. Where is she? Can we see her on the website? Yes, you can. And there's a, a lot of, um, there's a lot of Instagram stories. If you follow Plant Riverside District on Instagram or Facebook, You'll see a lot of stories and shots of uh, Chromina jewels and all the uh, geode collection. We really created a natural science museum here. Richard's always been into 
rocks and fossils and yeah. minerals. So that's one thing you wanted to create here. So the theme of this hotel of the of the historic power plant is a natural science museum. So we really took that and and developed stories and told the story of, of fossil fuels of the power plant, the reconstruction of the power plant, and and all to top it off, you have a chrome dipped dinosaur in the lobby. So wow, and and hopefully soon. Diana will dress up the dinosaur with different dress so we could see her fashion as well, transcribing in the lobby. Though, so. yeah. <laughs> hey, Diana, thank you for selecting our jewelry. I'm wearing the love one, and oh, I know I you have them one. in some of your hotels. I have that one, too. My love to you, of course. <laughs> so, Diana and Mark, tell us, besides hotels, restaurants, bars, all the world you build. What is your other passion? Well, you may not know one of our passions that we do together is... We love driving past cars together, John Charles. Well, that I knew, of course. You okay. knew that, but tell okay. Us, tell us more. Tell us more about that. You like speed. Yeah, we like speed. We like speed. Uh, and responsibly so. Um, so we, we like to go out on the track. Um, we live very close, well, a couple hours away from one of the world's greatest tracks, Sebring. And Daytona. And Daytona. But I like Sebring better. Um, I actually, you've experienced Daytona more than I have. Yeah. But in a couple of weeks, we'll be out on the track together at Sebring. And it's been about five years since we've been on the track. So um, got... We share That's a car. We share. We share a driving instructor, and Diana's a very good driver, um, and uh, she's very precise and uh, very, very good driver. So, we enjoy doing that together. That's kind of our our fast our, hobby our and fast fun. It's the only thing yeah. I don't mind getting up early for. We have yeah. to get up very early to go to the track, and yeah. I don't like to get up at like five. Yeah, so six, she's not a morning person, John Charles. I'm so talking yeah. talking about that, you're gonna have to share. Each of you, what drives the other crazy about the other person? <laughs> is it the is it the toilet seats that you don't put down, Mark? Is it the sink he that she doesn't bedroom. clean well? He he loads a dishwasher well. He makes the bed perfect. I mean, I have no complaints living with this guy. Yeah. He he is like you do have a few complaints. What? Well, I, mean, I don't think so. Yeah. My, well, my, Diana, my, you gotta share something. Well, yeah. living, yes, living Mark. together, the toilet seat's always down, so I can't complain about that. Um, I do my chores. He does his chores. I do my chores, right? I, I just can't think of something at the moment. Let me, let yeah. me think about it. But I'm very know. concerned because Gina is listening, and her list is getting very big. So now, you're putting me in trouble here. The, the only thing about Diana, John Charles, is she likes to be fashionably late. So tonight, she was fashionably late for our 8.45 meeting, but I'm glad you said, hey, Mark, be there at 8.45 Eastern time so we could be on time for nine. I was Does that there work? <laughs> yeah, you were pretty Two good. Minutes. You were pretty good time, because it was John Charles probably, but, but <laughs> that is like a 15 minute late girl. So I, I always factor that in. I always factor that in our, our airport runs or being at work on time or something like that. So okay, that's so very much time. What, what else do you want to share, Mark? Anything else that you know, you would love to share that it's so fun that we would identify ourselves with. So, uh, Diane and I, we've moved around a couple times, four or five times actually. And we currently live in a, a neighborhood where we can walk to restaurants and stores and Trader Joe's and etc. So Diana's favorite thing to do is come home from the store, pile up all the bags on the floor, unload the groceries, disinfect them before she puts them away, and then leave the bags all over the floor. So that's the one thing that drives me crazy, John Charles. For like five minutes. <laughs> five minutes. No, longer than five minutes. For five minutes, they have to put everything in the refrigerator. No. I mean, please. <laughs> so I like to I like everything to be orderly in the house. And she, you know, she's got bags of stuff. She hides in the pantry. And so whenever I want to get her in trouble, we'll FaceTime her aunt in Lebanon and, and Auntie and, Rania. Auntie Rania, her her aunt in Lebanon, and tell her what a bad girl she's John been. Charles, he keeps me so busy I can't keep up. She can't. That's right. Hey, do you actually clean him before he goes to bed? So to make sure that he's perfectly clean from all his outings him. during the day? I know the drill. I know the drill. Know the drill. <laughs> well, and, and John so, Charles, what's, what's amazing real quick is, you know, look, we, we work together. We live together, obviously. We travel together. Our other 
passions besides driving is we love to travel for food and wine and architecture. So we base a lot of our trips around food and wine and architecture. Um, so we have that in common. So, you know, we, we're just so fortunate to be able to work together and still put up with each other after hours. I tell her I'm the boss from nine to five or nine to six or whenever we're at work. And she's the boss after that. So technically she's my boss tonight, John and Charles, even though it's after hours and we're at work. He's technically my boss tonight. <laughs> well, you know, this is very inspiring, exciting, and you great friends. And we've been friends for a very long time. And I yeah. could say to all our listeners, it is a true story. This is not a show. There's true love. There's passionate love. And it's electric and contagious. Every time I'm with you, I'm so inspired by that, besides all the great things you do. And I would love, before, before I ask you the final question, Diana, you know a lot about wine. You're going to have to tell us about the red wine. And you're going to have both to tell us as well about the wine you make and, yeah. and the tasting rooms you have in every one of your hotels. Because I think one of the most brilliant things among all the great things you've done is you've taken the wine country to your hotels and cities and experiences. We have. And the only one in Southeast. That's right. And as you mentioned, John Charles, we've got two bottles here on the table of uh, some beautiful juice from Raymond uh, Vineyards. And as you know, uh, I think this started, what, maybe seven or eight years ago with Raymond yeah. Vineyards. And my father and I uh, were at Raymond Vineyards. We met with you in your, in your uh, I guess, your blending room there. And we, uh, and we worked with you and your team to come up with our proprietary blend. Uh, of our Kessler wine that we put in all of our hotels to sell at our bars, our restaurants, our banquets. And so we work with you and your team to develop. And I think this is probably the, I don't know, third or fourth cr creation we've done now, blend. Everyone's been a little bit different. And uh, we've got our house wine. Uh, and we also have our, what we call our Bohemian collection. Our Bohemian collection has a, a piece of artwork on the front. And it's our, I guess our little, I guess our second tier wine. Uh, even better juice. It, it, you know, it's a very affordable bottle and it drinks, and it drinks two or three times, four times. Love what it, it. It's an amazing bottle. And whenever we're, John Charles, you'll like this, whenever we're entertaining investors or friends uh, at our hotels, we always order this and they fall in love with it. So. And actually the, the, we change the label every year. Um, and this year we have Max Pedria. He's actually an artist from Argentina and our Grand Bohemian Charlotte Hotel that we recently opened late, late last year uh, features a lot of his works of art in that property. Yeah. So that's yeah, so we've done, exciting. We've done a Chardonnay and then the two reds with with you and they've been very popular, very successful. So I think on that first trip with you, John Charles, we got to tour your Raymond, uh, your Raymond uh, wine facilities there and we got to experience your uh, blending room there. And so we said, how can we really take this into our hotels? And we were developing our hotel in Mountain Brook, which is a suburb of, of, of Birmingham and our hotel in uh, Charleston at the time. And so we took some space and dedicated it uh, to our first, you know, tasting rooms, you know, and obviously we work with you and your team to uh, kind of perfect that. And so we offer wine blending classes at our hotels that we did with you last year in Charleston. Yeah, that we we that you were our host last year. That was such a wonderful time, and in uh, in our in our Grand Bohemian in Mountain Brook in Birmingham. There we also have a cooking school right next door. So we've got the wine blending experience. We've got the cooking experience, and then obviously we've got you know our dining and bar and our and our hotel there. But that's really been a, a fun part of our you know look, you know wine is one of our passions like i said we've traveled for food and wine and architecture so we've really been able to take that passion work with you and your team and bring that to our hotel guests and so guests can you know create their own label put their favorite dog on there their daughter their family whatever they can put that on their own label so that's been a lot of fun and and we had a lot of fun with you uh last year in charleston doing that John. well and which is amazing and i want to thank our friend mark drake who is with us tonight of course because of his Yes. Always phenomenal Cheers. collaboration to gather all of us to do it. And and very importantly, I'm looking at Aziza, who is very impressed about how cute you look and how Diana is beautiful. And I can confirm she's beautiful in real life, too. And I want to say, which is so cool, 
And I want to say that to the world and all our friends listening tonight and, and who will watch this over, how innovative you were to actually do a blending room at your hotel. So to make it clear, dear friends, you could go to one of their properties. And I was on my last ever trip last March with Diana and Mark, and we blended with many guests. They could make their wine, blend their wine, put their label in the hotel and leave with a case of wine. I right. think Mark and Diana, that was phenomenally brilliant. That was a lot of lot of fun, John Charles. A lot of great collaboration, yeah. especially with your vision as well. Yeah. Well, and that's what you do is you push it to the next level. So we cannot escape Diana's description now. You need to tell us about there's no Shiraz, Diana, forgive us. <laughs> it's it's mainly Pinot and only Pinot. But I know you love the sensuality, and we knew. It makes Mark becoming French. Mr. Kessler will become very French kiss after this. So <laughs> you're away from home. <laughs> it's still your home. It's your hotel, but you can still be playful tonight. I, I think sensual is definitely one of the words for this. Absolutely. Um, very smooth and a little chocolatey as well. And I'm allergic to chocolate, but this is chocolate I can have. So this is perfect. So nice berry notes on that. It's a Black, good, it's a Black good cab drinker's Pinot Noir. Yeah, it is. It, it's not light. Um, it doesn't have too much, but it just has the right amount of body yeah, to satisfy enough. the palate. It's really delicious. And we haven't had dinner yet, even though it's, what, nine, 10 o'clock. Uh, and a lot of times, wine needs some food with it. And this is perfect with that, with, with just as it is, or even with a nice steak. So, well, so what are you thinking of having tonight? What kind of food? Uh... So, so tell them. We're so excited. <laughs> tell them where we're going. So our recent opening is Savannah Tequila Company. Last which week on is Friday. It's so funny because we were just having, we actually spent our Valentine's at our beautiful hotel. Sorry, everybody, my favorite property. Uh, one of my favorites, um, Grand Bohemian Charlotte. And we had a wonderful Valentine's Day dinner there on Sunday, obviously. And there's our psalm over there said, so tell us about your tequila company. And Mark and I looked a little confused. And we thought he was about the restaurant. And he was asking about like how we distilled it. And long story short, the word on the street is that we opened our own tequila label. Because it's right. called Savannah Tequila Company. So ah. it's the, the restaurant. <laughs> But all of our food and beverage directors thought, other than obviously here at Plant Herbicide, all the other properties thought that we had started our own tequila label, which maybe one day we should try. Yeah, we should try. Other than wine, our next thing we love is yeah. tequila. Um, so tonight we're going to have dinner at Savannah Tequila Company. It's our most recent uh, restaurant to open, and we're very excited to try it. The food is amazing. Um, and our, our, our head chef is from Mexico, has even his family recipes. His grandmother's there. recipe. His grandmother's recipe. We have over 100 tequilas from Mexico there. So um, it's something totally new and different for Savannah. You know, Savannah is known as a historically as a southern town, and, and it's been a little bit more progressive over the last few years. And so really what we've done here at Plant Riverside District is create very unique, authentic experiences in each with its own personality. So the Savannah Tequila Company, uh, we're very excited about. We did a tasting in this room about actually Richard Kennedy and my friend Chris Quarles were here for that. And the food was absolutely phenomenal. I've heard great things about it. So, and our friends from Orlando were here too from Epcot. That, they Javier. were. They were. So, uh, actually, enjoy this beautiful wine tonight uh, from Deloach. We're going to go have some tequila, some margaritas, and some Mexican food, John Charles. So, you're welcome to join. Uh, well, us. Maybe some hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, my last phenomenal trip was with you in your hotel in beautiful Charleston. It was my last visit early March. Yeah. For yes. the Charleston food and wine. So I haven't taken a plane since then. So wow. my next one will be with you, I promise. So promise. we want to thank you. Promise. We want to thank you so much. But we have one last question. You know, Richard, John, Aziza, everybody's loving you. And everybody's going to love you who's going to watch this all around the world in due time. Give us your last independent statement as... What would you say to the world in 2021? And we all know every business has struggled. It's never been easy. 
it's been a very challenging last 16 months and a few more months to come. But what what is your message to the world? I think, I mean, me personally, I think the biggest message is for everyone to love each other, to respect each other. Um, you never know what someone's going through. Just be kind and, and, and respectful and loving. And if you see someone that's down, help them out. Even if you, even if they don't express it, just let them, just let them know you're here for them. Even if it's a stranger, you might make a forever friend just by reaching out and seeing if someone needs your help. Um, you know, people have had some very challenging times, and you know, we hope this is a great year to come. I mean, there's a lot of great things happening with all the progressions in medicine and and, and what's happening around the world. So we 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 hope that everyone has a better 2021 than than the year that we had last year, and. Um, if anyone ever needs anything, Mark and I love to help. We're, we love our communities that we're in. And um, we're very passionate about helping others. And, you know, you just never know. Even if it's someone who doesn't think that you don't think they need help, they might. So just, just be kind and loving. And I, I hope that we have wonderful peace in this world. So well said. Thank you so much, Diana. Mark, do you want to add anything to this? No, I think that's very well said. But... I think another thing we realize is how, you know, how much we take for granted in life. And when things like yes. last year happen and um, I just think you've got to really enjoy life and experiences and don't ever have any regrets. So to me, that's important. And what Diana said is, you know, we're all in this together. So. Absolutely. And, and, you know, Aziza is with us and Richard and John and Mark and Ken and so many of our friends and, we're so fortunate, I agree with you, and Diana summarized it beautifully, as you did too, Mark, it's about friendship, and I reflect on our friendship tonight, you know, the last trip I did, I was looking at the both of you in front of me, and we had this spectacular lunch at your great property in Charleston, and we've had luckily many interactions since then, but it's all about friendship, and yes. it was 10 years ago we met, and I cannot wait for everyone to meet you live. We look forward to that. <laughs> and I, I, I'm looking forward to turning 50 and having a birthday party like you did, John Charles. <laughs> well, we were delighted you could come and you invited anytime. So thank Diana and Mark, thank you for opening the, the phenomenal personalities that you both represent, your love, your passion, your talent, your incredible vision for hospitality at large, hotels, bars, the Kessler Collection, design. We want to see Diana as well doing fashion. I want to see those uniforms the soonest. Send okay. me pictures tonight. I will. I, I got a call from HR about one of my uniforms earlier. So ho hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they're okay. I'm sure they are. So thank you both for being with us. Have a great thank dinner. You, John thank John, you for. Cheers to you. To you and all our guests who were with us. And dear friends, remember, call me. We'll get you great pricing, but you've got to go to the Kessler Collection. The best, the most amazing design galleries, art, inspiration to travel to. I know many of you want to go. So all our love to the Kessler family and Richard. Cheers. Charles Boisset family, thank you very much. We'll give Richard, Richard your regards. So thank you. Oh, All right. Thank you.